Aiming a Karchar is different than most other dinos in the game. Instead of paralyzing it and shoving food in it, a player must build up trust by feeding the car carcasses. Once it trusts the player, the player can then ride the car around and eat the dinos in the area until hitting 100% tame. It's that simple, right? <laughs> we will go over the best ways to do this though for PvP and PvE servers. Carchars were designed for PvP to counter the Giga, so it seems during the creation of the taming mechanics, the PvE side of things were not really considered. Therefore, taming the Karchar on PvE is much more difficult. A few things that can go wrong when taming besides the usual issues. The car can get stuck trying to eat a dead corpse, and if this happens, the car will ignore the player and offering until the corpse expires or something eats the corpse. If using a trap, the car can get stuck and not eat the offering. Traps need to be fairly large to avoid this issue. Cars are located at the tops of mountains north of the redwoods. Of course, they can wander down the mountain and chase creatures ending up all over the map. Now on the island, they can spawn up to two on the map at a time. Gigas take the same spawn as a car though, so if there is a Giga, there may only be one car or there might be another Giga. It seems to be that they respawn after four and a half to five hours. Cars will only spawn if the spawn region is rendered in though. Now that you know where to look for cars, once you have one located, the first step is to set up some sleeping bags or beds. The next step is to give the car an offering. The offering builds up trust with the car, and when the trust hits 100%, you can then ride the car. Before an offering, simply kill a dino, and then drag it, carry it, toward the car, until the car starts sniffing the air. When the car starts moving towards you, sit the offering down, and move away so you don't get bit or aggro the car. Do not move too far away though, or the offering might not count. Be careful if you sit the offering down before the car starts moving toward it, the offering may not count as well. Now it can take several offerings depending on what you offer the car. So what should you offer the car? Well, a dino of course. The level of the dino does not matter though. The trust meter on the car is built up based on drag weight. The higher the drag weight, the more trust is gained. Dinos with a drag weight of 550 or higher will get the 100% trust from just one dino. Check out this list of dinos that can hit the trust in just one feeding or two feedings. The trick here is that in order for a player to drag the dino, they need to have more available weight than the drag weight. A dino with 500 drag weight would require 510 weight stat on the player if the player has no gear or anything in their inventory, just to drag it, slowly. This becomes problematic as armors and weapons are usually needed. To get around this, cars can eat baby dinos. Baby dinos have the same drag weight as an adult, but do not require the player to have the weight to move the baby, making the babies much lighter for the player, and an easy offering. With ASA, there are a lot of baby wild dinos around. Bronto babies work the best and can usually be found along the river near 50-50. You can always bring a dino with you to kill and feed to the car on PvP. If you are on PvE, you can bring a melee otter with you and pre-cook an egg to a few seconds left. Then drop the otter, put the egg on the otter to hatch the egg. If the egg is still too cold, put some torches around it. Or if you have a buddy who could bring a second otter, put a second otter there. But in case you did not know, Otters provide insulation like a portable AC. Otters provide more insulation the higher their melee is. 322 melee was enough for a Rex egg at night outside of the snowy areas. In the snowy areas, during the day, we had to have a otter with 575 melee. But at night, we needed two otters, both with 600 melee each, to hatch the egg. Once the egg hatches, simply kill the baby dino. At least, I believe you can kill baby dinos after hatching before claiming in PvE. If not, well, you're left with using wild dinos. If I remember correctly, PvE officials do not allow picking of wild dinos, which makes starting the car tank process even harder. It may be best to bait the car near the wild dinos you want to kill, like uh, rhinos. PvP players can just use an Archie, Quetz, or Reno to bring offerings to the car. If you use a dino that takes more than one to reach 100% trust, be aware that the trust bar falls fast and the car will aggro you if you are in range after the feeding. Make sure to have another dino already killed and ready to go before starting the first offering. If the video has been helpful so far, smash that like button and subscribe. Now we understand the offering part, let's move on to the riding and taming section. 
Once the trust hits 100%, sprint to the car and mount it quickly. The car will run off and start fighting wild dinos, so you need to mount it before that happens. Now that you have mounted the car, the taming begins. In the top right is a timer. When this timer hits zero, the car will kick the player off and potentially aggro the player. Make sure to dismount at least 30 seconds beforehand and run off. While the timer is going, kill dinos with the car to increase the taming percentage. On official server, this process will need to be repeated two to four times, depending on how many wild dinos are in the area. Of course, on a PvP server, you can bring and serve up your tames to the car, making the taming a bit easier. The taming effectiveness can be dropped by taking damage. This includes fall damage. It seems to increase with the higher damage amounts, so an Iguanodon will not reduce the effectiveness as much as a Rex would. When fighting wilds, take advantage of the car's speed and back away while biting to keep from getting hit. The tail swipe is slow and may not always push the dino back, so it's not a great idea to use this during the taming. If the timer hits zero and the car hasn't been tamed yet, the taming effectiveness takes a big hit and can drop quite a bit. From testing, it does seem that the less stacks you have, the more the effectiveness drops. If you hit 100 stacks on the rage meter, the car will kick you off, but this is okay. You will lose very little effectiveness when this occurs. What affects the taming percentage the most? Is it levels? Is it dinos? Nope. What affects the taming percentage the most is hit points. The more hit points a dino has, the faster the taming percentage fills up. But alas, so does the rage meter. So what this means for PvP players is you can bring Brontos, Turtles, whatever you have with high HP and set them on passive, unclaim them, and kill them with a car. Now if possible, leave the dinos that you wish to feed the car unleveled until time to feed them to the car, and then level them all into hit points. That way, they are not healed up and do not take forever to munch down. On PvE or PvP, if taming the car off of wild dinos, do not worry about which dino has the most hit points. Wilds are usually low level and do not have a lot of hit points, even if they were high level. So the key is speed and amount. There are exceptions to the rule, of course. Gigas and cars do not give very much taming percentage, even though wilds have insane hit points. Titans are the same. A tamed turtle with 30k hit points, will give a similar amount of taming percentage as a wild titan. Whenever the timer is getting close to ending or you are about to hit 100 stacks, it is best to take the car to an area without dinos or without ones that can fight back. When the car kicks you off, it will fight whatever dinos are in the area. If the car takes damage during this period, it will lose effectiveness. Some ways to avoid this is to put down some pillars or dino gates for the car to attack or even a tanky tame with a good saddle that is on passive. If you enjoyed the video, smash that like button. Have an awesome day.